Okay, so now we come to the structural question. It says, the following synthetic roadmap problem centers on the structure and properties of A, a key intermediate in these reactions. Give structures for compounds A through J. Show stereochemistry if necessary. If there are more than one stereoisomer form, draw only one of them. Each structure is worth two marks. Do not write mechanisms or equations as no marks will be given. Draw the structures in the designated box given on the next page only. So guys, you have to read instructions carefully and do what you are supposed to do. So let's see the problem. Here you're given the numbers, some molecules, reagents. You are supposed to decipher what they are. And there's one hint here, a small one. It says the structure of D, where is D? Ah, over here, is identical to one of the molecules from A, B, C, D. Oh, a, B, C, E, F, G, H, I, J. So I will just show you what I will do. And now see this molecule? This is a molecule with both the ketone and the aldehyde. So with protection using a diol, now take note this is one equivalence. TSOH is a form of acid catalyst to catalyze the protection of a carbonyl group. But in this case, since there's only one equivalent, as you have learned from me, the aldehyde is always more reactive than the ketone, and hence this gas protected. Right, the aldehyde gas protected, that means the structure of A would be as such. Alright. Now we know that since in A, we have the ketone exposed. The ketone is exposed, and we know that the ketone cannot be oxidized further. So after permanganate oxidation, you get the same thing. Because the acetal here will protect it, protect the aldehyde from being oxidized. So D is the same as A. Now before this step, this is a des martin pyridinane. This is a weaker mild oxidizing agent. It will oxidize the alcohol. If it's a primary alcohol, it will stop oxidizing it until the aldehyde. If we begin with a secondary alcohol, you will oxidize it to ketone. So since over here you have got both the ketone and aldehyde, there are a few options for B you can choose from. Either both alcohol or one of the alcohol. It's all valid. Now from A to C, you notice that right, the ketone is now exposed and the nitrogen here of this hydrazine derivative could attack onto the CO double bond of the ketone and after that followed by an elimination reaction and you get a NC double bond. Recall what I taught you in class, this nitrogen connects to two hydrogen, so you remove this two hydrogen alongside with the oxygen of the ketone and then voila you get C. Back from A, again the ketone is exposed. What you do first is you do an acid. Acid, what does it do? It will deprotect the acetal. So after protecting after deprotecting it, the acetal, both the ketone and aldehyde are exposed. But only the aldehyde gets oxidized by this sodium dichromate 6 to form the carboxylic acid E. And after using PCl5, the OH will be substituted with a chlorine, and hence the F. From A, your Grignard attack onto the carbonyl group yields a tertiary alcohol in G. The CH3 adds on to the carbon with the ketone group at the first place, right? You get a tertiary alcohol. And the second step, this is a workup. So because we have acid here, so again, you could tell me that you deprotect the acetal, fine. And then here you have a tertiary alcohol with an LDI. So after doing a reduction, 
you get a diol, right? Reduction of the aldehyde gives you a primary alcohol. Now to the right side, if I warm gently to the alcohol, what do we do? What do we get? We look up for clues to the next step, okay? Now from this molecule, you compare to the one before. You are not given, right? so you compare to the one before that. You see a major difference is you have this extra ring here. This is a cyclopentyl ring. So it is a step up reaction. That means some step up reaction must have taken place. And we learned that through our examples, the Grignard reagent is very useful here. So you try to connect. Grignard attack what? A carbonyl group either aldehyde or ketone to give you an alcohol. And this is a secondary alcohol, which means that prior to that, it must be it must be the what? The aldehyde. So this carbon that connects to the OH initially must come from the aldehyde. So that means the only change from G to I must be the formation of double bond, which means this is a dehydration reaction. And it all makes sense. So now you have the structure of I and everything. So once again, the summary for this question is as follows. I hope we understand this and have a good time. Enjoy learning. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.